Okay, so let's continue with the discussion now of optical flow. And now uh, let's talk about the similarities and differences between frame-based and event-based optical flow. It might look a bit strange to talk about these things, even though we haven't started to uh, see methods uh, about event-based optical flow. But uh, let's try to have a, an introduction, a small, short discussion. What are the similarities? Um, well, uh, again, we haven't really looked at the at the problem itself uh, or the solutions to the that people uh, try to propose to solve event-based uh, optical flow estimation. But in general, what we can say is that um, some researchers try to exploit the same principles, even if they do not uh, or they cannot use the exact same uh, data. We try to exploit common principles such as brightness constancy um, to estimate optical flow, even if it leads to uh, different uh, algorithms for frame-based cameras and for event-based cameras. So um, the idea is to try to at least uh, reutilize what we have known or studied for frame-based vision, at least from, from a conceptual point of view. And uh, well, frame-based vision and event-based vision, they may suffer from similar fundamental problems such as the aperture problem. Uh, so the aperture problem is the one that we've seen in the previous video by which if you look like a small region in the in the image plane, whether that's brightness or, or events, uh, you're only able to, if you have like a 1D edge, you are only able to determine um, one component of the, of the velocity of the flow sorry, of the, yeah, one component of the, of the optical flow velocity. And that's uh, the one that it's perpendicular to the edge. Because the other one, there's not much uh, you can say. So that happens regardless of whether you have uh, brightness or uh, kind of the temporal derivative of brightness or the events. In this sense, frame-based cameras and event-based cameras, they suffer from this same problem. It does not vanish uh, just by changing the this type of input. On the other hand, uh, you may argue, well, they do not suffer from the same problems because we know that frame-based sensors, they suffer from motion blur and exposure uh, uh, problems, whereas event-based cameras, they have very minimal motion blur and they are much better. They have a higher dynamic range. Um, so they are different modalities to to acquire the um, the visual information. Yeah, that would be also also correct. Um, also, a similarity is that optical flow is expensive. A big part of our human brain is dedicated to of the visual cortex to to processing this information, and when you start implementing optical flow algorithms uh, because you want to know the flow for uh, in principle for every point on the image plane not only for every point on the image plane but we are considering like a signal in a space-time volume on the image plane when we would like to know the flow on every point on this volume and this is expensive um, yes and we'll see another comment about this uh, soon. What are the differences? Well, the main differences in trying to tackle the problem of um, optical flow from frame-based vision or from an event-based vision point of view is that event cameras have a different characteristics of the signal. Right? The, the signals that are being considered in standard cameras and in event-based cameras are different. So what are the differences? Uh, in what we will call geometry, because it's space-time, we know that frames are synchronous and dense, whereas events are asynchronous and sparse. So that's a big difference. We need to rethink um, this uh, space-time uh, flavor of the, of the signal. Another one is the, the photometric aspect, because uh, standard cameras, they give absolute intensity, whereas uh, Event cameras, they provide only temporal contrast. It's a different type of uh, signal, right? So this temporal contrast is typically caused by moving edges. So in one case, we have uh, absolute intensity, even if nothing is moving. On the other one hand, we have temporal contrast, typically by moving edges. And you need to design algorithms that considers uh, that 
the signals that are being uh, processed, they, have, they are different, different meaning. And also noise. Noise is very different than event noise and uh, the noise in conventional images, uh, images from standard cameras. So those are three aspects, but there are there are more differences. Uh, one other one is the, in the scenarios. So because event cameras, and uh, they have uh, or they offer um, potential advantages in um, high speed in high dynamic range scenarios. So in principle, uh, the difference is that you could. Uh, use optical flow, you could try to estimate optical flow in these scenarios with event cameras and not with frame-based cameras. And another big difference is the, the degree of maturity of the technology. Frame-based cameras have been studied and researched for a long, long time, whereas event cameras, they are uh, quite recent. So obviously the techniques developed for each uh, type of signal are, are not the same. Uh, event-based cameras or the techniques for event-based vision is slowly catching up with the frame-based ones. Mm -hmm. Then uh, why studying optical flow? Why would the event-based optical flow be attractive? Well, as we have seen, it has many applications uh, for basically anything that has to do with motion estimation and you can uh, be humans or insects, animals use it for uh, perceiving a, our environment. In particular, why event-based optical flow is attractive compared, for example, with frame-based optical flow? Well, we've seen that event-based cameras, in principle, are better, are more suitable at acquiring motion. Uh, they do it at very high temporal resolution, and they do it with uh, without motion blur and uh, with low latency. Uh, and suppressing all redundancy information. So if we try to exploit the properties of event cameras, events allow to obtain flow. In principle, if we are able to estimate flow from events, then this implies that we would be able to estimate flow in high speed and high dynamic range scenarios and also at low power because event cameras, at least the sensor part, it's, uh, it's low power. Another uh, interesting fact is that event cameras, uh, they send, so the, the events are provided uh, by moving edges. So potentially we would have more efficient algorithms because the signal that we are processing is directly the ones that comes from moving edges, which are the informative regions of the image plane. So we are, if, uh, for regions that are uh, have constant uh, brightness or so, um, homogeneous regions on the image plane, then in principle, few events or no events are generated from these regions. And therefore, we know that it's not reliable to estimate flow in these regions. So we could directly discard them. And if we want dense flow, then typically we will have to interpolate or fill in this with additional priors. But potentially, the, uh, we are uh, focusing our attention, if we were to call it like that, we want to, we are focusing our attention on, on events and events are caused by moving edges and the edges are the informative regions of the image plane. We know that there are two types of edges, right? The one, the edges that, uh, where we can only estimate the normal component of the flow and then there are like corners or more complex edge patterns that more are reliable to, to estimate the optical flow. And uh, it's also an attractive topic because potentially you could implement this in neuromorphic hardware that is very efficient and uh, it's a biologically plausible, a biologically plausible computational model because in the end we are trying to understand nature. So we are creating a synthetic um, system, a synthetic agent or technology to try to understand um, um, human uh, visual system or the, the analytical part of of the human visual system. Okay, so if, uh, what what are some opportunities? What it's missing? As I said, this is, may sound a bit strange because we haven't talked really about uh, event-based uh, optical flow, so we don't know what's there. But uh, what we can say that it's missing. 
are data sets and benchmarks. So metrics and protocols. This is currently missing for comparison uh, of the different algorithms that would foster uh, progress in the field. So we want to advance the state of the art. So we would like to compare it, uh, different algorithms. And um, what's the problem? The problem is that ground truth optical flow is at least for event base, it's difficult to obtain. Um, so one way to do it is that we could say, we know now what optical flow is and we know what motion field is. So let's run first a SLAM algorithm or let's use a simulator and try to estimate the, the uh, whole uh, three geometry of the scene and the motion of the camera and then project the 3D motion on the image plane to obtain motion field and that we could use as, as optical flow. Yes, we could do that. Um, but it's also expensive and it's also prone to error. So we could use ground truth uh, as ground truth emotion field in simulation. So we, we have a simulated 3D scene and camera motion, that's perfectly fine. But then, however, in simulation, we still don't have good models for event noise. Um, and we would rather have real world data not only simulation but real world data so that then we can apply our algorithms on on real scenes so that's for the ground truth and then the matrix and protocols we need to clearly define a way how to compare different methods so what are the metrics that we are going to use and how can we can quantify this trade-off so for example most people focus on measuring accuracy and some people, when you are implementing it on a dedicated hardware, then you also report efficiency, uh, not many people on latency, latency. It would be nice to have this set of metrics that you can use to, to, to measure the performance of your algorithm and compare against other methods. Uh, so once you had data set and benchmark, what it's also missing is a thorough comparison to actually carry out this comparison of multiple methods in a variety of scenes to consider different textures, different illuminations, and also different motions, um, speeds, occlusion, parallax, because we know that events heavily depend on the, on the texture of the scene and on the, on the motion. And if we have this uh, thorough comparison, uh, then hopefully uh, that will allow us to identify key ideas and best practices and develop improved algorithms of optical flow estimation. And a, a bit of a discussion here. Um, so event cameras were commercially available in 2008. So this is an emerging field of research. It's not the same as uh, maturity that is, exists with standard cameras, I think we're still at a, in an exploratory phase of methods. And that's why maybe we we haven't cared too much about establishing a, a benchmark because sometimes benchmark could uh, constrain uh, our our creativity. We are only focusing on, on beating the, the benchmark, even if uh, it might, it might uh, preclude some good ideas to to emerge if they are not uh, well implemented or developed. Um, and presumably, what we have we can see is that uh, what as what happened with frame based methods or in standard computer vision is that uh, data driven methods will will soon dominate. Um, yeah, this has happened in, for example, we've seen that variational. Uh, methods for optical flow computation, then mm, they were out, outperformed by neural networks that try to learn or memorize or regress optical flow. And, and yeah, maybe this will also happen if it's not already currently happening with event based vision. Again, the, the, here they might be focusing too much on accuracy. There are many more things than accuracy in, uh, in, in, in dominance, right? If, if you have a, a robotic platform, you not only care about accuracy, but you care also about the computational resources that you have. And if you cannot put a GPU to compute things, then maybe you have to uh, come up with a more lightweight algorithm. So the algorithm is, is kind of designed not in isolation, but uh, in, in taking into account the whole system, uh, a holistic point of view from, from the sensor to the processor, the, the application. And the hardware platform. So the pro 
Yeah, uh, and for this, uh, I encourage you to read the uh, section 4.2 of the survey paper on event-based vision, um, where there is also a short discussion, but there is also a presentation of the methods, and that's what we will see in the next videos.